Hello there and welcome to my vlog. This vlog will examine the differences between skills and capacity issues in the weight room with their definitions on the screen now. It is understood, however, that these can often coexist as the ability to perform a skill may be limited by the capacity the athlete has. The four athletes used are rugby players in their mid-twenties with no pre-existing injuries reported. So I'm just going to let the athlete complete a few reps here. I think firstly we can see that the athlete just about reaches parallel and that's probably giving him it. Um, we can also see that um, although the knees go forward, um, his shins are extremely vertical and this means that his um, knees don't really go past his toes. So this probably is an ankle dorsiflexion issue, capacity issue that we're dealing with here. Um, to go on, we can also see that the athlete um, struggles to keep the barbell um, on his anterior deltoids. So where the barbell is probably meant to be positioned in the front squat, um, during the whole motion, he is unable to do that. Um, this is probably due to a lack of thoracic lat and tricep mobility, meaning he's not able to um, hold the barbell on his anterior deltoids at any point of the movement. And then um, finally, in, in the squat here from the lateral view of athlete A, is that we can see that there's an excessive tilting of his head backwards during the squat. Um, this is putting his cervical spine into hyperextension, probably as a compensatory movement for a lack of thoracic extension. So his um, capacity issue here has led to a non-optimal movement strategy. So from the backwards view of athlete A here, we can see that he has an imbalance in the amount of hip external rotation he's able to produce as we're able to see more of his left leg here than his right leg from the backwards view. Um, from the ground up, a positive note, the athlete is, to, is able to maintain contact with hold foot on the ground during the squat. He does, however, use uh, a strategy of a bit of knee values on his ascent to help his ascent in a few of these squats. Um, once again, as mentioned in the lateral view, the athlete is unable to position the barbell properly as an anterior deltoid, leading to his elbows pointing down here. So once again, the capacity issue of the lack of lat thoracic and tricep mobility probably at fault here. And then finally, just a slight bit of hip shift on his um, final squat. So then just from the front view of this athlete, we can see that he sits further into his right hip, his left hip during this movement. Um, that lack of external rotation in his right hip is probably at fault here, but this also causes an uneven barbell when he's at the bottom position of the squat. Um, and then just a side note, there seems to be a lot of movement around the athlete's tibiofemoral joint during the front squat. So just going to examine his movement pattern a bit more here. We can see that although he's got his heels elevated in this anterior loaded squat, his knees don't go past his feet. They just go in line with his feet, so probably still an ankle dorsiflexion issue. So World Rugby suggests that 10 centimetres is a normal ankle range of motion, but we can see here that on his right foot and then on his left foot as well, even with the shoe on, that um, his heel raises up. So this is definitely a, a ankle dorsiflex and probably a soleus range of motion a mobility issue that is affecting his squat. So in terms of um, active hip external rotation, we can see it's 38 degrees here with his left hip, but only 32 degrees with his right hip. So obviously there's a capacity issue here in the external rotation of his right hip, and this was seen in the um, bottom position of his squat as well, could possibly be due to the limited ankle range of motion. When performing the standard shoulder elevation against a wall, we can see the athlete's probably compensating for his lack of thoracic mobility by extending in the lumbar spine here and most likely a rib flare as well. So to conclude with athlete A here, um, he has a capacity issue when completing the front squat and the capacity issues uh, mentioned on the slide here um, lead him to complete the front squat in a non-optimal manner and in some places cause compensatory movements elsewhere. So with athlete B here, we can see like 
like athlete there, they just about reach parallel um, in the bottom position of their front squat. Uh, unlike athlete A though, they are able to maintain a neutral spine in the bottom position of the front squat, as well as getting their knees past their toes. Um, on the ascent of the squat here by athlete B, um, the barbell slightly shifts backwards and this could possibly indicate a quad dominant squat pattern. So from the backwards view of athlete B here, we can see that although he's able to hold the barbell in the correct position, um, it's an uneven barbell in this top position. Once he squats down here, we can see that there's a significant hip shift to the right hand side of his squat, whereby it's obvious that he's sitting into one side. Um, also in this bottom position, we can see slight right ankle eversion, and this lack of capacity is probably due to the lack of skill of sitting evenly into both his heels. So as seen with athlete B here from the front, he's unable to hold the barbell evenly in the front rack position. In his couple of squats here, we can see it's quite a fast descent, doesn't look a very controlled movement, doesn't seem to be employing a bracing strategy. His gaze isn't straight ahead or slightly above, it seems to be quite a lateral gaze, and we can see in this bottom position that he is sitting into that right hip. So following giving the athlete some cues here to sit evenly into both his heels and to keep the barbell up evenly, we can see that the bottom position of his squat is a lot better looking. He's not sitting as far over to the right hand side. We can also see less ankle eversion and the bar is held more evenly. This here is just an assessment I heard from Kyle Dietz about quad dominance. So the athlete just performs three counter movement jumps with their eyes closed. If they were to move forward of their starting line, this would hint at quad dominance, but the athlete here doesn't show this. So following the second video from the backwards view of athlete B, we can see that they have a, a more optimal movement pattern for the front squat, um, where they're sitting into both heels. Um, the fact that queuing was able to resolve the problems with this athlete front squat mean that most likely it's a skill issue and even the capacity issue of the right ankle eversion when taking a slightly wider stance um, the athlete didn't have that problem I believe athlete C has a capacity issue when performing the good morning exercise. Although I'm pretty content with their hinge pattern in terms of their lower extremities, we can see that they complete the movement with a rounding in the upper back as they are unable to maintain a neutral spine during the movement. I believe this is because of a lack of isometric thoracic extension and lumbar extension strength, meaning that they are unable to complete the movement optimally. I had athlete C here complete an upper back isometric test for which they were able to hold the position for 41 seconds. I believe athlete D has a skill issue when performing the good morning exercise because of their lack of familiarity with the movement as they have a good training age. As we can see from the lateral view here, athlete D pushes his knees back during the movement and I would guess that his weight distribution goes back into his heels at this point. We can also see a slight rounding of the athlete's lower back as the movement continues past the point in which his hips stop moving. What we can see from the backwards view of athlete D here is mainly their hand position. With the wide grip that this athlete is employing, this will limit the amount of upper back involvement in the movement as the scapular aren't retracted. Following cueing the athlete, however, we can see from the image on the right that athlete D is able to maintain a neutral spine at the bottom part of the movement. Whilst it's not perfect, we use safety pins so the athlete can get a feel of the movement stopping around the point in which his hips stop moving backward. We can also see that athlete D has attracted his scapula more following cue than his previous attempts. To conclude, as mentioned previously, there has to be an appreciation surrounding the fact that skill and capacity issues are often correlated as described by the graph on the screen now. And as a coach, it's our responsibility which issue to target in order to get the most positive effect while staying as close as possible to the movement task. For athlete A, I think it would be best to regress to a different anterior loaded squat whilst working on ankle dorsal flexion through full range of motion exercises and banded distractions. For athletes B and D, I think finding out the best cues that the athlete understands will allow for better motor control as well as repetition of exercises. For athlete C, the slightly difficult issue here is that there were no normative values for the upper back isometric strength test. What I would probably do is use a different hinge pattern whilst targeting an increase in isometric back strength and then reintroduce the 
good morning exercise and see if the isometric back strength was at fault or if there's an underlying skill issue.